the ego does not develop outside of the self in isolation of biology or the social environment. Both of those two factors are overwhelmingly determinants before you get anywhere near personal psychology. Mm. That five stage model, mm. that explains so much, mm. Frames, mm. reframes everything, both therapeutically and for self-development reasons. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, people don't just come in with their psychology. They present in all sorts of different ways. You have to be able to deal with that. Hi, everyone. Today, we bring you an Ask a Depth Psychologist video, the series we've been doing on the channel since we've begun, where you guys, if you're signed up at the $10 tier or higher on Patreon, you get to submit a question for the three of us to dig in on the YouTube channel. So we've got quite a few in the pipeline because we've, we been, we've been incredibly busy, especially yourself, Steve, over the last little while with the Personal Myth Guide, which is almost out, almost out. You can pick that up if you are so inclined by the link in the description down below. But without any further ado, because we've got quite a few to do today, I thought we'd start with Adon's question, or Adon. And he or she says, of what relevance do you find developmental psychology models to be, both clinically and generally? For example, Cook Gruter or Cook Gruter? stage of ego development or Ken Wilber's integral theory? You guys are far more equipped to answer that than I am. Thank you. That's, um, that's a good question. It's such a huge field, developmental psychology, and there are different competing models. If you personally find any of them helpful, I would say go with them. Uh, from my own experience, I've, and I think Pauline would be the same, I would rationalise the whole thing down, consider them in the background, uh, and then always focus on the immediacy of the person that you're working with. That helps to uncluster your mind and see what's really there. In general, you should apply theory through practice. So practice should determine which theory lights you up and, and informs you. And in that sense, that's why actually, on the subject of the, the personal myth, that we've put that model together in the way that we have. That's a distillation of... 40 years of my, over 40 years of my experience, and the same for Pauline clinically. And in that sense, we do tend to look more at Freud, Adler and Jung. We keep it pretty much focused on them and on the people who've developed out from them. Not for dogmatic reasons, but because it fits. It actually fits when pressure tested. Those models fit. That's really, really important. So we're not trying to contain or um, control a person by fitting them to a model. We always go, don't we, with how a person presents and mm. what the uh, the objective uh, background is for their life. Uh, Ken Wilber, yeah, we're a very highly thought of guy, um, particularly by the so-called fourth force in um, psychotherapy, so all the humanistic and transpersonal um, schools. I don't personally subscribe to his ideas. That doesn't mean that I'm knocking them. I just don't subscribe to them. Mm -hmm. um, my approach is psychodynamic within a biopsychosocial model. Um, and our, as I say, our personal myth approach is based on a distillation of that experience. But if you find Ken Wilber useful to you, by all means, go ahead. Plenty of people I know in the field do. Um, but not for me personally, not for, for me at all. But yeah, in a general sense, they are useful, of course. Yeah. Well, we, we tend to go on um, what we find to be true empirically, yeah. ultimately. Um, and I think like Steve has suggested, it, it, in terms of picking up on theory and using it clinically, it, it's whatever lights you up, I think was the expression that you used. Mm. Um, but ultimately, you do have to put theory aside, like Jung himself said, yeah. and um, yeah. see what you experience yeah. in that yeah. with in that moment and and with your connection yeah. to that particular person. And very often, a lot of these theories fall short. So, yeah, by all means, experiment with them yeah. and test them out. Pressure mm. test them. We always encourage people to pressure test things. Yeah. But for us, um, we wouldn't be without biology as well no. as psychology no. and also the emphasis on uh, psychosocial relationships too so um having pressure tested that over many mm. many years that's what works for us yeah. and and if you leave any one of those elements out then mm. i i think it reduces your effectiveness mm. without a doubt yeah so um that that's where we stand personally but obviously it's it's yeah. for each person to decide for themselves what they find useful. Yeah, psychodynamically, if you think of Freud as being basically biology, uh, and then yeah. um, 
Jung as being the psychological element and Adler being the psychosocial element, you have basically a psychodynamic biopsychosocial okay. approach. Mm. Um, you can't do without biology. Yeah. You, you can elaborate the psychology side of things and inflate it with all mm. sorts of fanciful ideas as much as you like, but yes. biology is the essential substrate. Uh, and you will if you actually follow a developmental mm. model properly by which I mean empirically based on reality rather than on a fanciful inflation of psychology, which mm. a lot of these theories do, um, you'll find that biology comes first, then the social adaptation, and then finally psychology. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a bio-social psycho in terms of its development, although by convention people say biopsychosocial. Yes. Um, so Freud first, then Adler because of the necessity to adapt socially, and then psychology will follow from that. Um, hugely important in the real world to apply things in that way. Most definitely. I mean, without the biology, for example, if somebody comes to you and they have a particular medical issue, then that, that has to be taken into account. And it might be sometimes that you're actually advocating on behalf of that person against a medic against a doctor, a doctor's opinion or a nurse's opinion or, yeah. or anybody else that, that might have influenced them clinically. And so you do need to know something about biology and about medicine and and how that is applicable clinically. Um, otherwise, you you know, you, you've, you've only got half of the equation. If, if you just purely focus on psychology or what's happening psychosocial and you miss that out, you know, you miss a huge yeah. chunk of what might be happening to that person. Yeah. And like I say, you may not be able to advocate for them properly mm. because it's just missing from your model. So uh, we wouldn't be without it. No, not at all. What do you think, James? What's your angle on that? Well, it's, 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 I'm far more new to this, obviously, than you two are. And so come coming into it, there are many, many, many different theories that I kind of saw. Mm. But my own personal take, and I think the audience resonates quite a lot with this, uh, for whatever reason, is that most of them don't do anything. Mm. And I think that's self-evident because th why else would people be coming to, say, a YouTube video? I, I, I don't want to reduce things down, but why would you come to a YouTube video for that level of psychological support mm. if these things were available? Mm. So, for example, I'll, I'll take a look at these two things. I personally do not know what these two things are, mm -hmm. but I'm like, okay, um, I'm happy with this model. Mm. To be completely honest, mm. at the moment because it's it's working, you know whether or not these stages of, of ego development work or not. Mm. <clears throat> there are just so many out there that, yeah. in terms of my own libido and my own personal interest in the biological side of things, it's like I, we don't need to explore all these millions of ideas. That's one thing as well. Like the more boyo side of stuff takes a look at is you should chew on the ideas of every single person who's come before you. Mm. Which is a little bit odd to me. It's like you've got to study mm. Plato and Aristotle, all the Greek um, plays and tragedies, and go mm. through all the Christian works, and then all the different um, uh, clinicians. It's like what people should be focusing on instead for self-development purposes, which is what motivates most of the people watching these, is to return back to their biology at mm. core. Mm. And, yes. and what that, that program, Lifespan Development Stage, um, is, is in them. And you guys have been using that quite a lot recently in the IPSA seminars mm. for yeah. Card, Card of One, and you mentioned it in Card of Two recently, mm. that five stage model. Mm. There was a graphic in that that was put into um, one of our most recent videos, yeah. the one, one on the anima. That mm. explains so much, mm. Mm. Frames, reframes everything, both therapeutically and for self development reasons. Yeah. So I'd say go towards that instead. And then if these things become useful, you know, or if you find you still have a problem, then take a look at these things. But they're yeah. often just distractions. Yeah, totally self development agree. Point. Mm. Totally agree. Yeah. Psychoreductionism is a huge problem. Mm. If you have a Jungian background or have been influenced by Jungian ideas, in terms of development, you probably have been exposed to Edward Adinger's idea of an ego self-axis. Mm. Mm. And from within the containment of that framework, it's absolutely fine. From within it, which um, this will be unpopular uh, of me to say this, but I think people are used to me saying unpopular things about some Jungian ideas. That, that mm. is pure psychoreductionism. Yeah. It makes absolutely no sense outside of itself. If you put that into a biological framework, it doesn't work. Mm. Um, the ego does not develop outside of the self in isolation of biology or the social environment. Both of those two factors are overwhelmingly determinant before you get anywhere near personal psychology. Mm -hmm. The environment is the immediate ecology of your existence. It's where all the immediate threats are. 
your social interaction <laughs> from the moment you're born is all about survival and immediate adaptation. Biology and the social environment are where you flourish or you fail. So those elements are most important. To go on about the ego in a young, or the ego, if you want to pronounce it that way, in a Jungian sense, developing out along an axis from the self, which is a psychologism, it's a psychoreductive um, understanding of the totality of a human being's existence. To go on about that is an abstraction. Um, the value of developmental psychology in its broadest academic sense is to put it into the framework of biology uh, and even the social sciences as well. Uh, and where people get away from those two absolute overwhelming and immediate facts, they lose it. They start to lose their orientation it's, to reality. It's, it's so strange. How could you consider, and I, I don't think people who read these consciously consider, but it is yeah. built into these assumptions. The ego to not be at least partly psychosomatic. Yeah. If I, if mm. I flick you in the eye, you're going to squeal in pain, mm. and that's the ego experiencing that because that's yeah. that's what you call I experiencing that. So yeah. so it, like the the self therefore would have to be the genomic self. It is. You know, it yeah. would have to be rooted in biology. Yeah. Um, mm. Whether or not you know, whether or not it's a useful metaphor. I mean, I think if the ego self axis could be a useful metaphor for certain things. But then if, if what you're, you're learning is simply a useful metaphor, so you can do far better than that. Oh, yeah. Far yeah. better than that. Yeah, yeah. It, it tends towards inflation, doesn't it? Very, very much so. And I think, you, like I say, clinically, that that's, that's where you, you pressure test these things and you, you mm. see whether they, they work or not in individual people's lives. And it, it's quite clear that, you know, from our experience, so many people come in with psychogenic problems. Yeah. And if you don't have any knowledge or understanding of, of, of um, biology or medicine, you, you're going to come unstuck yeah. very, very quickly. Very so, you, you, you know, you bet if you still have a, um, a Jungian bias, shall we say, you better to move towards people like um, Anthony Stevens and Ernest mm. Rossi, who are, I think you describe them as transitional figures, Steve. Yes. They're that kind of crossover yeah. between pure Jung, but they also take biology seriously yeah. as well. And for, for us, that's the most effective way at working because nine times out of ten people don't just come in with their psychology they present in all sorts of different ways yeah uh, and and you have to be able to um you have to be able to deal with that yeah uh, absolutely and if they come in only with their psychology mm. it's because their biology is stable yeah if the biology yeah. is unstable it will undermine your psychology yeah. completely so it's of overwhelming importance, as I say, that, mm. that people understand that they are complete whole systems. The Personal Myth Ultimate Handbook is now available for pre-order. For anyone who has a yearning deep in their very genome to become who they truly feel they should be, this guide is utterly indispensable. Pick up your copy today and make 2021 the year you truly begin to become yourself.